welcome back to iPulse News Live. As we said last week, our program differs slightly from the norm this season. Some of us are here recording in the studio, but some of us are reporting remotely to maintain safe social distancing protocols. Those of us in the studio will be wearing masks, and we ask that you bear with us as we do our best to bring you the news and keep our team safe. Now, here's the news. I'm Camille Valentine. During a court hearing in Michigan on Tuesday, Special Agent Richard Trask gave more detail about an investigation that led to the charges of six men last week for an attempt to kidnap Michigan's Democratic Governor, Gretchen Whitmer. It turns out that Whitmer was not their only target. It was later discovered that there was talk of kidnapping the governor of Virginia as well. The attempted kidnapping of Governor Whitmer came after President Trump called on supporters to, quote, liberate Michigan, Virginia, and Minnesota in a series of tweets in April. An FBI agent testified that members of the anti-government paramilitary group Wolverine Watchmen discussed the kidnapping of Virginia's Democratic Governor Ralph Northam during a June meeting in Ohio. The FBI alerted Northam's security team, but neither the governor nor his staff were alerted since no imminent danger was posed, per security protocols for highly classified information, according to Northam's spokeswoman Alina Yarmosky. Yarmosky believes the planned attacks are the result of rhetoric that comes from the White House as the president encourages violence against those who disagree with him. Yarmosky said, quote, here's the reality. President Trump called upon his supporters to liberate Virginia in April, just like in Michigan, end quote. I'm Nicole Ruiz. Last Tuesday, Supreme Court Justice nominee Amy Coney Barrett was on Capitol Hill for a second day of hearings. One question by senators, she avoided to answer how she would take an approach to issues such as abortion, gun rights, and health care. Barrett said at the second day of confirmation hearings, quote, Judges can't just wake up one day and say I have an agenda. I like guns, I hate guns, I like abortion, I hate abortion, and walk in like a royal queen and impose their will on the world, end quote. Many believe that Barrett's nomination puts in jeopardy everything that previous Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg fought to protect. Barrett has been open about her views, but has not publicly stated that she plans to overturn Roe v. Wade. The judge has, however, always referred to abortion as, quote, always immoral, end quote, and has a prominent anti-abortion rights judicial record. In regards to health care, Barrett has said that an Obama-era policy requiring employee health plans to cover contraception was, quote, a grave violation of religious freedom and cannot stand, end quote. Lastly, when speaking about the Second Amendment, she has suggested in the past, along with other conservative judges, that they are eager to take a more expansive approach on the Second Amendment. I'm Beverly Bukesi. There has been a major turnout for early in-person voting in some states. Thousands of people have shown up waiting to make their voices heard. Voters waited online for six or more hours to vote. In Minnesota, Virginia, and Georgia, people were in line before voting sites even opened. Due to fear of exposure to COVID-19, election officials are encouraging people to vote early, either in person or by absentee ballot. Voting booths are supplied with hand sanitizer and disinfecting wipes, as well as I voted early stickers. Voters also had the option of turning in their ballots from their cars curbside. Quote, with the whole COVID-19 environment, Voters have multiple opportunities to vote safely, whether it's in person or through the mail, and ensure that they have the confidence that they know their ballot is being received by us and is processed, end quote, says the Minneapolis Director of Elections and Voting. Whether you choose to go in person or by ballot, get your vote out. On Monday, the California Secretary of State issued an order to the California GOP to remove the illegal ballot drop boxes that have appeared in Los Angeles County, Orange County, and Fresno County. Top elections officials are trying to find out how many of these illegal drop boxes Republican staffers put up in the three counties over the weekend. The state's Republican Party, meanwhile, has indicated that they won't comply with an official order to remove the boxes and may even add more. California Secretary of State Alex Padilla stated, quote, if they refuse to comply, then of course we will entertain all of our legal options, end quote. Padilla has said that the images of these ballot boxes that his office received showed some of the boxes labeled as official, even though they had not been placed by the county elections officials in those areas. Republicans mislabeling and misrepresenting the boxes causes issues because voters are led to believe that they are turning in their ballots to elections officials. It is currently unknown how many ballots were dropped off at these illegal boxes. I'm Abigail Sears. 
2020 started with murder hornets, and it looks like it's going to end with venomous caterpillars. The caterpillar, also known as pus caterpillar, inject their victims through their sharp spines with a substance that causes painful reactions. Although the pus caterpillar is not a new species, it has recently made its presence known in Virginia, although it is not commonly found in the state. It's made its way north from Texas and Florida, where typically the caterpillar is found. Experts believe this is due to climate change. There have been cases in Florida in the past. In 2019, a Florida woman went to the hospital after one touched her wrist. She stated, quote, I've had two C-sections, other surgeries, and nothing came close to the pain. It felt like someone was drilling into my bones. Although the venom seems excruciating, there is no need to be afraid of these caterpillars. They won't jump out at you and are still rare. The Virginia Department of Forestry stated, quote, if you find the caterpillar, leave it alone and let its natural enemies control their populations. I'm Marissa McGrady. On Tuesday morning, shares of Johnson & Johnson stock fell approximately 2% after the company halted their clinical trials of their current coronavirus vaccine due to, quote, an unexplained illness, end quote, arising in one of the trial volunteers. Johnson & Johnson has not yet revealed whether the ill volunteer took a placebo or the experimental vaccine. China and Russia both approved vaccines without reviewing any results from any phase three trials. And President Trump claims that a vaccine will be ready in the U.S. before Election Day on November 3rd. Health experts urge caution and proper investigation into all safety issues in late stage trials, despite the actions of Trump, China and Russia. John Moore, a virologist at Wheel Cornell Medicine, said in reference to Johnson & Johnson's delay, quote, this kind of event epitomizes why vaccine development cannot be influenced by artificial timelines such as an election, end quote. COVAX, a humanitarian project aspiring to deliver coronavirus vaccines to the world's poorest people, is in deep trouble as rich countries decline to participate. COVAX is led by the World Health Organization and partially funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but they already face potential shortages of money, cargo planes, refrigeration, and the vaccines themselves. The potential vaccine shortage comes in light of the world's wealthiest countries opting to negotiate their own individual deals with drug companies and consequently monopolizing the vaccine supply throughout the majority of 2021. To summarize the issue, Rohit Malpini, a public health consultant who previously worked for Doctors Without Borders, stated, quote, the supply of vaccines is not going to be there in the near term and the money also isn't there, end quote. I'm Marianne Guzman, reporting from Boca Raton, Florida. In the last seven days, the United States has had 340,722 confirmed cases, but the U.S. continues to reopen and go on with life as normal. On Monday night, President Trump held a rally only a week after being dismissed from the hospital. America's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, warned the Trump administration, quote, that is asking for trouble when you do that. We've seen that when you have situations of congregate settings where there are a lot of people without masks, the data speaks for themselves, end quote. Unlike the United States, many other countries who have had rising numbers have decided to take certain precautions. Spain has placed Madrid in a state of emergency. France began to close down some bars and restaurants in maximum alert areas. On Monday, Iran adopted some of the strictest measures yet. After breaking its single day record for death and infections regarding coronavirus for the second day in a row, about 272 people were confirmed dead. As numbers have continued to rise, authorities have announced tighter restrictions for their capital of Tehran. Recently, reopened public facilities such as schools, mosques, cinemas, and museums, and beauty salons have been shut down. The government has mandated that all Tehran residents wear face masks outdoors and in public places and warn violators that they'd be fined. I'm Trey Johnson. The World Trade Organization, which regulates trade amongst its partners, is stepping up the trade wars between Europe and the United States. The WTO allowed Europe and the U.S. to impose billions of dollars of tariffs on each other. Europe retaliated due to illegal grants given to the U.S. playmaker Boeing. In addition, the WTO gave the U.S. permission to retaliate on up to $7.5 billion of European exports annually. This affects the consumers and the economy in countries. Quote, it is time to find a solution now so that tariffs can be removed on both sides of the Atlantic, end quote, says Airbus chief executive Guillaume Ferry. The New York Times reports that both countries will wait until re-election to decide how to move forward. With change in negotiation, it could change the consumer behavior for better or worse. 
I am Danielle McDuffie. The nonprofit education organization behind the children's show, Sesame Street, created an episode to teach viewers about racism. The anti-racist special is titled The Power of We, with the hope that families will watch together and form a movement against racism. The special defines racism for younger viewers and shows how it can be hurtful. The episode displays a variety of different situations in which racism is prominent. In one skit, a black Muppet is told by a white Muppet that he can't dress up like a superhero because they're only white. The Black Muppet refuses to stop playing superheroes, saying that they come in all colors. In another segment, they sing a song called How Do You Know, where Elmo is asked how he would feel if someone didn't like him because they don't like the color red. Elmo responds with, Elmo wouldn't care what you said because Elmo is proud, proud to be red. In addition to this episode, the Sesame Workshop also has several online resources about racism. Justin Bieber Crocs Collaboration was released on October 13, 2020 at noon. Crocs is a shoe company established in 2002. They were always knocked as an unfashionable shoe company, and because of this, they never met the trends and were expected to go out of business. The rubber shoe has seemed to surprise its haters as they've come back with collaborations with top artists like Post Malone and Justin Bieber. Due to the high demand on the Crocs website, they had to push the online launch event to 1 p.m. due to the website crashing 20 minutes into the sale. Within 10 minutes, Justin Bieber's brand website, Drew House, sold out of their supply of shoes. The shoes were sold at a retail price of $55. Post Malone, a famous rapper, sold out of his limited edition collaboration Crocs, and now you can find them resold on reseller platforms like StockX for $400. The resale value for Justin Bieber's Crocs continues to inflate due to their exclusivity and lack of restock dates. Currently, on StockX, Justin Bieber's collaboration shoe is being sold for double its price. Within an hour, the shoe was sold out on the Crocs website, and now we can only wait to see how much these exclusive shoes' resale value will rise. The Los Angeles Lakers won their 17th NBA championship Monday night, beating the Miami Heat in six games of a best-of-seven series. LeBron James was named Finals MVP for the fourth time in his career along with his fourth NBA championship. This concluded the NBA bubble and season, where the league had zero confirmed COVID tests throughout the two-and-a-half-month bubble. And that's the news for the week. Be sure to check out the iPolls app and website to stay up to date, and remember, always wear a mask.